Hello again. Uh, time for another exposure blending video. So this time it's going to be a little bit different from the previous ones that I've done. And what we're going to do is we're going to blend three different exposures, but we're just going to take certain parts of the exposures that we want. Okay, so for example, uh, this is my main image, um, and I've done an exposure for our sky. So the first thing I do is I usually shoot an exposure for our sky first, um, and then I'll take a few different exposures for the foreground, especially with moving water. Um, so then we can try and capture some movement in the water and try and get as much interest in the image as we possibly can. So I've gone through and I've shot off a few different exposures for the foreground, and these are the three that I've decided that I like the most. Okay, so this one here, this is my main image. So this is the one with the water uh, coming over the rocks. This image here, I kind of like this wave rolling in in the background. And this image here has what almost looks like a figure in the water. Um, so I really like that. And what I want to do is basically combine the three together. Okay, so I want this wave rolling in. I want this as my main image but I want to incorporate all these different aspects into the one image. Um, but I'm going to show you how easy it is to blend four exposures together to create one image. Okay, so again, this is not a full workflow. This isn't a start to finish workflow. This is just an exposure blending um, and showing you how easy it can be to blend multiple images together. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get all of our images the same, okay? Um, now, I know for my three foreground, um, I, everything is the same, okay? I've shot at f16, I've shot at almost half a second to get that movement in the water, okay? So that's what I was after. Now, all these images are shot at the same settings, uh, same white balance, everything is identical. So what we're going to do is press Control A, and that's going to select all of our images. So whatever adjustment we start to do, we'll apply it to all of the images. Okay, now if you've seen my previous videos, you'll know about my starting point. Um, and my starting point is basically bringing down our highlights and our whites and lifting our shadows and our blacks. And what this does is it brings back some detail in the bright areas and brings back some detail in the shadow areas. So if we have a look at our before and then our after, so not a huge difference, but just enough to bring back a little bit of detail in everything. Okay, um, so again, at Control A, we're going to select all of our images. So whatever adjustments we do, it's going to apply to all of them. Um, I'm just going to warm it up just a little bit. Let's just take our temperature up a little bit. We might just add a little bit of magenta into it. Nothing too crazy, just plus five. And we're just going to bring our exposure down. Now, I purposely overexposed this image just to get that shutter speed at about half a second um, and to capture as much shadow detail as possible. Okay, so now that we have our foregrounds sorted, okay, they're all roughly the same. They don't have to be exactly the same. Um, as long as the main components of our image are lined up, and if you're shooting on a tripod, everything should be lined up, okay? Now we're going to have a quick look at our sky. Now our sky is way too dark, so we're just going to brighten that up a little bit. Um, so somewhere about there. Okay, so that's it. Again, we're not doing any, we're not doing a full workflow. We're just going to blend these images as quickly as we can. So now that we've got all of our starting point sorted, we're going to open all of them into Photoshop. Okay, so now that we have them all open in Photoshop, what I like to do is choose my starting image. Okay, so this is my starting image. This is my base image. And now all I'm going to do is grab my other exposures with the move tool and basically drag them on top of my starting image. Okay, so we've got that one. We're just going to, with the move tool, just line them up. And you'll see as we line them up, the only thing that's going to be moving is the water in the sky. Uh, if it had been windy, we could have had some movement in the leaves, but we're pretty lucky here. It was a nice still day. Okay, and then our other exposure, same thing. We're just going to click and drag and place that on top as well. Okay, so then we've got our three base exposures. We'll leave our sky for now. We'll get to that later. 
Um, but we've got our three foreground images all stacked on top of each other um, and ready to start blending. So just by clicking the I tool, we can we can hide them as we go. So our background, that's our base image. That's that's the one we're going to work with. But what we're going to do is just add these areas of the other images. So the easiest way to do this is just with a layer mask. So what we're going to do, rather than using the eraser tool um, and rubbing out the bits that we don't want, what we're going to do is create a layer mask. Because the problem is once, once we've rubbed that out, you can't really undo it without control Z um, and it can be a pain. So by creating a layer mask, what we can do is basically just grab our brush tool, grab our black brush, and again, I've done another video on layer masks. And what we're going to do is we're going to black out the bits that we don't want. So all we want is that wave through the middle. So with a black brush, a nice big soft black brush, so make sure your hardness is down to zero. So right click on your mouse um, and turn your hardness down to zero. So this will create a nice soft brush and make the blend much nicer. And then with a black brush, we just black out the bits that we don't want and that'll reveal what's underneath. Okay, um, so all we want is that wave through the middle. Um, if, if you go too far, if you accidentally black it out, just change back to a white brush, so X on the keyboard, or just use your arrow keys to change between black and white. So back to a white brush, and then it'll paint back in that top layer. Okay, so black brush blacks out, uh, the white brush is the opposite, so it paints back in what we want. Okay. Uh, the other way of doing this, if I just delete that layer mask for a second. So another way is to hold Alt on the keyboard and select the layer mask. And then what that'll do is basically it will black out that layer. Okay, and then with a white brush, you can paint in the bits that you want. Okay. As long as you know roughly where the areas you want are, just with a white brush, you can then paint in the bits that you want. Okay, so I find it, for starters, um, just create a white layer mask, use a black brush, and black out the bits that you don't want, okay, to reveal what's underneath. So basically your black brush is going to reveal what's underneath. So we have this layer selected, we're going to black out the bits of this top layer that we don't want to reveal what's underneath. Okay, so make your brush nice and big, get it done quick. Okay, we don't we don't need the sky. Okay, all we want is that wave running through the middle of the image. So as you can see, there's our starting image, and then we've just added that wave in. So just with a nice big soft brush. Um, and again, if we want, we can hide our background, and then we can actually see what we're painting. So we could make our brush smaller. Um, get that horizon nice and straight. We don't need that. Because just in case there is movement in this bush, um, if we eliminate it, then all we're dealing with is that wave. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so the, the eye icon will let us see our layer. Okay. So there's our starting point, and then we've just added that wave in. Okay, and then the same thing with our top layer. All we want is this little figure in the water. So we can create a new layer. Um, sorry, create a new layer mask. And then just mask out the areas that we don't want. Or, another tip, if you press, have your layer mask selected and press Control i on the keyboard and that will invert the layer mask. So it's now turned the layer mask to black. So then with a white brush, we can brush in the bits that we want. So we know he's down here somewhere. Um, and the good thing with the layer mask, if we paint in too much, so we know he's down here somewhere, just paint in that whole area. Um, and then you can switch back to your black brush and just paint around the figure um, to bring in the original image. So you've got just what you want. Okay, so just alternating between black and white brushes, you can paint in or paint out whatever you want. Okay, I might want a little bit of water here so his hands kind of just makes the blend look a bit nicer. Okay, and that's it. That's that's how we've just 
combined three different exposures into one. So if we just hide them, there's our starting image. We've blended in a wave and then we've blended in our figure into the foreground. Okay, so from here what I like to do is flatten my image. So we're just going to go up to layer and all the way down to the bottom, the second one from the bottom, flatten image. Okay, and that's that's given us our foreground exposure basically. Again, not a full workflow, we're just going to blend for this stage. Uh, we can do all sorts of adjustments once we're finished. Okay. Now what we want to do is bring in our sky. So if we just grab our sky, grab the move tool, and we're just going to drag the sky over our base or starting image. Just line them up. So we've got our base exposure underneath, and then we've got our sky on top. Now for this part to work, I've done another video on this, um, and I call it the easiest way of exposure blending. It's the easiest and most effective way of exposure blending. There, there are arguably easier ways, but I find this way the most effective. It's the smoothest blend, um, and it's just easy. It's easy. So what we need to do is have our brighter exposure on top. Now, if you try and move your background, it's not going to move, so we can't move that brighter exposure on top. So two options. One, we can press Control J, and that will make a copy, and then we can move our copy on top. Um, or you can just unlock it. So if you click on this padlock, that just unlocks the layer, and then we can move it to where we're, wherever we want. Okay, so either way, brighter exposure on top, and then all we're going to do is create a layer mask. We're going to click on that, the thumbnail of the top exposure. So this is the important part. Click on the thumbnail, go to channels, hold control on your keyboard and select RGB. And you should see these marching ants come up. And what that's basically done is created a luminosity mask. So what it's going to do, it's going to select the brightest areas of the image. And then if we go back to layers, we click on our layer mask and then with a black brush, what we're going to do is we're going to black out the bits that we don't want. And it's going to reveal what's underneath. So just with a black brush, get as close to the tree as you possibly can. Um, and you'll find that more passes you do, the more it will start to reveal. Okay, so luminosity masks. Uh, still the most effective way of blending multiple exposures. Okay, the first step with a layer mask, um, because all our exposures were the same, uh, we're just basically blending them together, where this one is more of a, a blending two different exposures in a bright exposure and a darker exposure. Okay, and that's it. So if we, we hide our sky exposure, as you can see, we've still kept all our detail in the darker areas. Uh, but we've just brought that sky back in. Okay, and that's basically it. We've just combined four exposures into one. So again, not a full workflow. This is just get the blending done. And that's how easy it is. That is how easy it is to blend multiple exposures and as simple and effectively. Okay, so from here, this is when we can start to do other adjustments to the image. We can start to add some contrast and some color and um, and make it look like this. So hopefully you liked this video. If you did, please leave a like. Uh, please feel free to subscribe. Lots more videos coming up. Again, most of them will be aimed at beginners, people starting out with Photoshop, trying to keep things as simple as I possibly can. So thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.